Today we're going to talk about the very first Batman comic published in 1939. This is a series where I recount and add my perspective on certain comic issues, such as the first issues of superheroes like The Flash and Captain America, which is their origin stories, or where I just tell you about a certain comic issue that I particularly liked or thought was goofy, such as Superman convincing Lois Lane she's a witch. This is a work in progress, so there'll be tweaks here and there as this series goes along. The very first Batman comic was published in 1939 in Detective Comics number 27, and it was about a short six-page story. It opens with Commissioner Gordon entertaining his young socialite friend, Bruce Wayne. But oh no, Gordon gets a call and hysterically repeats everything he hears. Can you imagine being on the phone and talking like that? Stab multiple times, you say. His name was Lambert, you say. Blood all over the carpet, you say. Should stop repeating everything you say, you say. Just a little ridiculous. Anyways, a man has been murdered in his own mansion. And Gordon's like, hey, Bruce, this man's been stabbed to death. Want to come check it out? That's right. You two can be front row at a murder scene if you're best friends with the best commissioner ever. And Bruce's response is even better. Eh, yeah, I've nothing better to do. Might as well go check out a corpse. Clearly, the 30s were a very different time. Bruce and Gordon get to the crime scene, and they begin the police work. Young Lambert, Lambert's son, claims that he didn't kill his father. And while Gordon is interrogating the young man, Bruce is in the background smoking a pipe like a goddamn pimp. Clearly, no fucks are given by Bruce. Seriously, why does no one question how he's so calm around a dead body? Slightly suspicious, if you ask me. In the middle of interrogating, they get a call from Steve Crane, who says that Lambert received a threatening call, and now he has two. Gordon tells him to not let anyone in the house that they're coming. And Bruce is like, meh, I've seen enough corpses for the day. See you later, Commissioner, and ends up heading out. Suspicious. <laughs> but poor Crane, Gordon doesn't make it there in time, and he ends up being shot dead. The murderer then ends up fleeing, meeting up with his partner in crime. But unfortunately for them, Batman is waiting for them. With a terrific right and a deadly headlock, Batman sends the criminals flying. He then picks up their papers, reads it, and a grim smile comes to his lips. That's the grim smile. Can, can you see it? Also, his car. If I wanted to inconspicuously get to places, I'd also drive a bright red fucking car, which looks exactly like the one he drove to the original murder scene. Meanwhile, Gordon and the other fine police folk that think it's perfectly okay to invite non-police friends into a crime scene to hang out find Crane dead. They see a trend. Two of the four business partners are dead. They head over to Rogers next, one of the last two business partners. But Rogers has decided to head over to the last partner's laboratory, Alfred Stryker. He's met by Jennings, Stryker's assistant, who instead knocks Rogers over the head and ties him up. His plan is to control everything when Rogers and Strikers are out of the way. Jennings leaves Rogers to die, but luckily for him, Batman shows up. But oh no, Batman, look out. Jennings ends up showing up and pulls out a gun, and Batman, not taking anyone's shit, ends up greeting him with a flying tackle. And then he proceeds to just wail on him. At the same time, Stryker shows up and reveals that he wanted Jennings to kill Rogers. Stryker takes out a knife and comes at Rogers, but Batman is to the rescue again and reveals Stryker's dastardly plot. All four men were partners in an Apex Chemical Corporation. Stryker wanted to be the sole owner, so he made secret contracts with them to pay a certain sum of money each year until he owned the business. Being too greedy, he decided he wanted to kill the other partners and take contracts so he could own the chemical corporation without paying the money. Stryker, in one last desperate attempt, ends up breaking free of Batman, and Batman punches him right into a vat of acid. His response? A fitting ending for his kind. And for those of you saying Batman wouldn't pull that shit nowadays, I want to remind you in the recent comic Batman and Robin Annual Number 3, he makes a ship full of aliens crash into a volcano, and while they're burning alive, he has a good old father-son moment. Batman's cold. Our daring story ends with Bruce and the Commissioner talking again, and Gordon thinking what a boring life Bruce must have. Then later, a door slowly opens, and we discover that Batman is, in fact, 
Bruce Wayne. So that was the very first Batman comic. I hope you had as much fun listening to me talk about it as I did telling it. Make sure you come back every Thursday where I talk about a new comic issue. Make sure you check back often on Sundays and Wednesdays for Game of Thrones videos, Monday and Friday for Star Wars videos, Thursday for comic videos, and eventually Tuesday as well we do Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead reviews.